Isn't this a cool way of using Oracle technology? Directories, external definitions, block dumps, clobs. <laughs>came to your 23 session in Pune last week. In one of the slides, you mentioned more flexible lobs in 23C. What is better about lobs in 23C? And there's two core features, I think called lobs for value, which we won't talk about, and some controls over lob sizes, which I think is super cool, and I thought we will show that. I'm gonna create a directory inside my database, which actually points to the trace directory on my database server. Because what I wanna do is I actually wanna dig into some trace files, but from within my SQL Plus session. I'm gonna create a table called T with a clob in it, enable storage in rows. And as we know, you can have a certain amount of bytes in line in a lob before the database, even if you nominate enable storage in row, that it'll force it out anyway. And we can demonstrate that. Let me put a clob here, which is 512 characters long. Now this is a UTF-8 database. So 512 characters is actually double that internally. And let's explore if we can prove that. So I'm going to flush out the buffer case, do a global checkpoint so anything that's in memory is flushed out to disk. I can actually find the block number and file that that one row is actually stored in using DBMS row ID. And if I know that, I can actually dump that information out and dump it out to a trace file. I can look at v$diag/info, which is available in my session to see what my trace file will be. And I can actually do alter system dump data file, the file number and block number from up here. So I've taken that block, which has my clob in it, and I've dumped it out to a trace file. My trace file was also stored in a directory, which I previously named tracedir. So I can actually run a select star from an external table, which I dynamically create on the fly using my trace file name. And I'm only going to look for entries that look like this, which is the information I'm looking for in a block dump. Isn't this a cool way of using Oracle technology? Directories, external definitions, block dumps, clobs. We run that, and this is what comes out of my block row dump. It says that my clob was actually 1,055 bytes long. This makes sense because it's 512 characters. You double that because every clob is stored as two bytes in UTF-8 because it's stored in the UCS2 character system, and we get a little bit of overhead as well, so it's a kilobyte in size. Okay, let's now do the same demo, but I'm going to make my clob now 2,000 characters in size. Go through the exact same thing, flush it out, find its block, find the trace file, dump it out to the trace file, dump, get my external table, spit it out, and notice it's no longer there. 2,000 characters is 4,000 bytes. The limit for a clob being stored in line is about 3,900 bytes, somewhere in there. I can't remember the exact number, but it's in that vicinity. So you had this issue. The clob got too big. You wanted it in line. The database said no, and it stored it elsewhere. This is now just a pointer to where it is stored in a separate lob segment. This is the cool thing that's coming in 23C. For a lot of us, we've had that issue where we say, well, all my clobs are going to be about, say, 5,000 bytes. And I know, I know a block is 8,000 bytes long, or it might be 16K, et cetera. Can't I just have a bit more control? And now you can. In 23C, I can say enable storage in row, and I want to be able to have up to 8,000 bytes in line. I'm not now bound to that hard-coded limit of 3,900, and I think it might be 3,968, but at this hard-coded limit of bytes. So I can actually nominate my own. So now I'll put in my 2,000 characters again, which is 4,000 bytes. We just saw that would normally be flicked over into its own segment. Do the exact same thing, find my trace file, dump out the block, build it up, and there it is, stored in line. Once again, overcoming that previously hard-coded limit. If I go too big, if I go 3,900, right, dump it out, that's squeezed in. 3,900 came to 7,831, which is less than 8K. That's squeezed in as well. If I went to say 4,000 or 4,100, remember that's characters. That would bump out to 8,200 bytes, which would overblow both my 8,000 limit and the block size, and we'd be back into lob locator territory. But still, very cool, especially if you have particular requirements, especially in the world now of things like JSON and stuff like that, or unstructured data, which is say, let's say in the 10K range, finally, we might have a really good use for perhaps a dedicated 16K block size in a table space. So we could guarantee that certain large-ish lobs are stored in line so they can be accessed extremely quickly as opposed to going through lob segments and locators. Mm -hmm.